All right, folks, we're here at Northeast Comic Con and Collectible Extravaganza. Bob McCarthy here in the chariot you've known from Lost in Space. We're going to have a fantastic event for you today. We're going to go around and see all the celebrities, all the cosplayers, and see all the incredible action at today's incredible event. Hello, is there audio on it? Hello, everyone. Captain Jack here at Northeast Comic Con. I don't know where you are. You should be here now. I'm gonna go get some rum. I'm not gonna launch my language though. Okay, I'm joined right now with a man dressed up as The Flash, one of my favorite shows on the CW Network. We also have Henry Allen here today, who John Wesley Ship, who plays Henry Allen in this great show. What made you want to dress up as The Flash today? Well, I was a big fan of season one, and I was doing Arrow cosplay too, but then I wanted to expand my horizon and do The Flash, because it's one of my favorite TV shows now. Actually, it probably is my favorite TV show. It's probably the best show on television right now, right? I would have to agree. You like Gorilla Grodd that was in it recently? Yeah, Gorilla Grodd. I hope to see more of him because he's just getting better and better as the show goes on. And then we're doing the crossover with the Arrow. How do you like seeing the Arrow on it? Now we had Hawkman and Hawkgirl the last episode? Yes, it's going to take up every day of television with Legends of Tomorrow. And I'm going to be obsessed with every single show that they come out with. All right, so what do you want to say to all the Flash fans here at Northeast Comic Con? Um, I'd like to say uh, stay in school and uh, don't drive past the speed limit. What he said. All right, we're always running into this guy. All these conventions, we can't get rid of him, but he is the Dark Knight. He's here to protect us, to make sure everything goes according to plan. He is the ultimate crime fighter and superhero, the one and only Matches Malone, Northeast Comic Con Collectibles Extravaganza. What brings you here today, superhero? Justice, always justice. Now, I, I seen you with the girl. I mean, it, it must be the car, right? Chicks dig the car. How, how, how are you making this happen? With the girl, she loves me for the heart, not the car. And this is why Superman works alone, right? Superman works alone because he's faster than a speeding bullet. He is faster than a speeding bullet. That might not be good for the ladies, oh. right? Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. let's talk about Flash, the fastest man alive, right? Exactly. He don't get a lot of dates, right? Nope. Once you hear these, the fastest, okay. What's your opinion of the new Batman Superman movie coming out? Christian Bale is gone. Ben Affleck? What is going on here? Why do we got Ben Affleck as Batman? Shouldn't it be on an episode of Friends or something? I mean, what do you think about the new movie coming out? I think Ben's going to kick ass. I think he's going to serve a lot of justice. And I'm proud of him to have another New England native donning the cowl. All right, folks. He's going to make sure that justice is served here today. The one and only Matches Malone. All right, I'm here with Ralph Squirlanti, one of our greatest members here of the Shriners, here in Wilmington. Ralph, you come to all these great events. You're a member of the Shriners. What do you think about Northeast Comic Con today? Oh, this is fun. This is absolutely, you know what, being a member of the Shriners, I get to come in for free. Whoa, that's great. But, you know, where can you see stuff like this? This is, like, unbelievable. And, and you get to hang out with me. Oops. Who, Come on. Who better than, than... Who better than Canyon? We're going back 16 years 16 here. 16 years to the original Damien Darkseid, the man the myth, the legend. This no, man, this is the man right here. No, He's no, the no. legend. He's the one myth. One of the greatest managers ever to be in independent Stop professional wrestling. Stop it. Stop wrestling. it. No, Stop fantastic. it. You're embarrassing fantastic. me. I'm blushing right now. If he would be my manager, that would, that would, 
you know, excel me to the top of the list with anybody because I had him. Don't put side. me over. I'm here to put you over. Nah, we want to put you don't over. Worry about this it. is one of the great. This is I'm one of so my best friends crime. in the world. This guy is so awesome, man. 16 years, nothing but love and respect I have for this man. He's he's been there for me. This guy is one of the most ultimate guys. He's a veteran who served our country and protected us. One of the greatest veterans in the world. One of the best pro wrestlers that we've ever seen. We're so glad to have you here, Ralph. Who are some of the celebrities you'd like to see here today? Uh, actually, just got to see uh, Mark Goddard and uh, Marta Kristen got inside the uh, uh, space. the the chariot. Yeah, it's great. Um, can't wait to see John Wesley ship. Oh yeah, the, the original Flash, Flash yeah. my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, and Claudia Claudia Wells. Oh Claudia my gosh, Wilson she's hot, future, yeah. hot, absolutely smoking, smoking. But uh, yeah, he's originally what I came for. Everywhere I go, he's I'm right behind him. I know he's the man to follow. Absolutely. You want to go where everybody knows your name, do 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 do. <laughs> he's not all there, but he's a good boy. Good boy, great man. Can't can't do any better than this. All right, folks, joining me right now is Barry P with the collectors. He's got the Hot Wheels, all these kinds of great exclusives here. Barry, what can you tell us about what you have here today? Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Barry, and uh, I run a small club. We meet once a month in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. Uh, we're called Do or Die Cast Collectors Club. We do Hot Wheels and Matchbox and all kinds of die cast cars and stuff like that. Uh, we meet on the third Thursday of every month at Batter Up in Tewksbury, and that's we're going to start back up again in January. We take December off for the holidays and stuff like that. So. Good time. Free coffee and donuts. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. So, so what made you get into doing this with the cars and, and this hobby? What made you get, decide to get into it? Well, you know, I've been collecting for years, uh, Hot Wheels and Matchbox, and uh, I noticed that these are the tougher ones to find. You know, your, your Batmobiles, your Simpsons, your Star Wars, your stuff like that. So I started kind of collecting those up, and then once I had enough to do it, I started doing the shows. Let's see some of them. Why don't you uh, show some of the viewers here? We can see what you're talking about here. Yeah, sure. I got, like, Check out uh, some of these right here. Here's Batman the Batman one right here. Time machine is Here's the popular. time machine right here, the DeLorean from Back to the Future. We got your Star Wars, got your Star Yoda, Wars your here. Vader. Now, now the price value go up on these, like action figures. And what, what's the backstory on these stuff? It, it does, it does, but it's not as much as people think. You know, what I mean, if, if if you make a buck or two off it, you're probably pretty lucky. You know what I mean? But it's just more of the fun of going to the store, getting it, right? The collecting it. Right. Now, do you do that with your kids as well? Yep, my son's a fun co uh, collector too. He has fun doing it. Yep. Right. Awesome. Barry, I want to thank you much for your time. Cameraman, we're going to say, Barry, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again. So keep checking out everything here at Northeast Comic Con, right, Barry? That's right. Check it out. Yeah. All right, folks, I'm joined right now with the legendary Mark Goddard from Lost in the Space. He is one of the many legends here today at Northeast Comic Con. He's also a low Mass native. Well, he's got family and ties to Lowell. I want to ask you about that since our show, one of the towns that we air in is in Lowell, Massachusetts. Yeah. So I want to talk to you about some of your roots uh, in the great city okay, of Lowell. Well, I'll tell you, you know, the truth, I was uh, born at St. John's Hospital. It's still there yes, it in is. Lowell, and that's yep. a long time ago I was born. I was born in Lowell because I wanted to be near my mom. But I uh, lived in Situate, and I went to Holy Cross College in Worcester, Massachusetts. I was arrested in Quincy, so I got a great history of, oh, I wasn't arrested, really. I, mean, I took a wooden Indian, uh, you know, from the Commonwealth Hotel. So and that's in my book called Through Space and Back, if anybody's interested in reading a fun book. Where can people find your book to order it right now? MarkGuided.com. Okay, so let me ask you about Lost in Space, one of the great productions that you did. How did you go from Massachusetts to Hollywood? Tell us that story, and, and briefly. Well, I flew. Okay. No, I didn't. I drove. Well, you took the chariot right here that we're <laughs> I in. I would have taken this if I had it. Yeah, that's right. It would have taken me a long while to get across, but it would have been beautiful. I would have loved it. Uh, I, I did stock in, uh, in, in Fitchburg at Lake Wyndham Playhouse. I did it down in Florida. I drove out to California. I had $8 when I ended up there. And I wrote a letter to a director I didn't know. He sent me to an agent. The agent sent me to Aaron Spelling and Dick Powell at Four Star. I tested for Johnny Ringo, and in two weeks I had a series called Johnny Ringo. Wow. And didn't you also do The Detectives? Is that true? They, one of the television shows? Yeah, Can you tell us about The Detectives? Yeah, I, did. I loved doing The Detectives with Robert Taylor. Uh, Dick Powell said, w I've got two series you can do, Michael Shane with Richard Denning, or The Detectives you can do with Robert Taylor. And I chose Taylor because he was a big, big, bigger star. And I wanted to, you know, work with somebody that was, uh, I, I was very impressed with him when I was young as an actor, you know. He was great. Quo Vadis and all those movies. So I was very, I was very fortunate. I had a great career. I had a great life. And I was out there, I was a, uh, an actor for 30 years in Hollywood, and then I came back and I've been a teacher for 24 years at the uh, Ethel Chamberlain School, 
in, Cham in uh, Middleborough, Massachusetts for 24 years. I just retired recently. So. Wow, that's incredible. Who are some of the great people you remember working with uh, up in Hollywood doing television? Well, we, and the detectives, we had a good cast of people that came in. We had like Telly Savalas, Edward G. Robinson, uh, Martin Landau, a lot of good actors came in. Uh, then, of course, I was on Broadway with Liza Minnelli, so you can't, you know, can't beat that. So, but I worked with a lot of fine actors along the way, and I had a, I had a very good career. And I got to know Chuck Connors very well because of the, uh, the rifleman that I did. And uh, Chuck, uh, of course, uh, was a Boston Celtic and, uh, back in 54 or something like that. Wonderful man. Miss him. Miss him a lot. So from Boston to Hollywood, back again, right? Back to Boston. Back to Boston I've again. Been, I've been back here for 20, uh, 25 years now, and I've been teaching it for, for 24 of those years. And I got remarried and have a son who's out in France, San Francisco now. So uh, I had a blessed life, really. It really been great. Well, thank you, Reg. Mark, for your time. We appreciate it very much. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Okay, I'm joined right now with Claudia Wells. You guys know her as Jennifer Parker from Back to the Future 2. A lot of great history in television and movies as well. Claudia, how do you like being here today in Massachusetts? I love it. I love Massachusetts. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to meet the fans. Do you, how do you feel about not being number two? Did you like look back on it and say you wish you did it or were you happy that you just did number one? I love the life I have so I can still do you know things with my fan base. Plus I own a men's clothing store. I have a son. Um, my best friends. I wouldn't have any of that if I had done Back to the Future 2 and 3. My life would have gone in a different direction. So I don't have any regrets. And, and what are you like fond memories looking back at the movie uh, right now in 2015? All of it was wonderful. A any little snippet I come up with in my brain, it was all wonderful. Fantastic. I want to thank you so much for your time right here at Northeast Comic Con. Thank you. <clears throat> and people can find me on ClaudiaWells.com. Okay, folks, remember, check that out at ClaudiaWells.com. Okay, folks, joining me right now is one of the greatest actors of all time, one of my favorite. That's right, John Wesley Ship, right here, Northeast Comic Con. You guys know him from playing the father of Dawson's Creek. He's also done some soap operas, but you'll also know him as The Flash. We're talking about 25 years now, John, of The Flash that came out in 1990. What do you think about the 25-year anniversary of this great program? Uh, it's awesome. We had a big celebration in Los Angeles at a theater. We showed the two Trickster episodes, and Mark Hamill came, and Andrew Kreisberg from the new show came and the special effects people and Joyce Heiser and Marsha Clark and it was uh, it was really quite an event that's uh, it's amazing to have been a part of this franchise for that long not only is Barry but voicing Professor Zoom and Batman the Brave and the Bold and now playing Henry Allen what was some of your favorite episodes? When we talked about the trickster Mark Hamill obviously that must be one of them. What was some of your favorite episode of that series? I also like the uh, uh, the Nightshade episodes, and I also enjoyed, I really enjoyed, although it almost killed me, both because I was playing four parts, Pollock's in and out of the suit, Barry and the Flash, was the uh, Twin Streaks episode. I like the themes in that episode of parts of ourselves that we don't trust, and sometimes those parts end up taking a bullet for us, you know. Uh, so I enjoyed those. those. And now you're on The Flash in the CW Network as Henry Allen. One of the great things is that we got you out of jail. You're out. Now you're a free man, uh, which is fantastic. But then you left. You kind of left Barry alone. Maybe you're, you know, you're locked up your identity. What, what can we tell us about Henry Allen? What does the future hold for Henry Allen on The Flash? You know, I, you know, they've got so many ideas, and they're spinning around so many different stories that uh, I'm not sure we know. You know, I, I know the, the beginning of uh, our first season, what they had planned changed over the course of the season. They keep responding to uh, comments on social media and reaction of the audience. But, uh, you know, right now, you know, Henry's just a really good guy. You know, he's a really good father. I know that they're invested in that side of him. Now with Earth 2, if there's another side, hopefully we'll be able to explore maybe some, uh, some other motivations. We'll see. We'll see. Well, it's fantastic. It's such an honor having you on our show today. Such an honor watching you. One of my favorite actors of all time. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, folks, right here with John Wesley Ship. Okay, folks, joining me right now is the legendary, the one and only Scott Short. You know him from A Christmas Story, Toy, all the great movies and television he's done throughout his incredible career. Scott, how's it like being back here in Massachusetts? Oh, I love being in Massachusetts, and I brought my, my baby, Miss Elizabeth, with me. So she's got to come and visit for her adventures on Facebook, and 
It's great. I, I always love seeing you, man. Now, there's so much great stuff that we can talk to you about. One of the things we talked about last time we talked to you was about being a ring boy for the WWE. And it would all the, how was that great experience like working for the WWE? Uh, for free, it was great, man. They loved not paying me anything. No, I had a blast. I really did. Um, I was always treated with respect and kindness, and the guys were great to me, and the McMahons have always been good to me. You know, I still see them, and I still go to WrestleManias, and I go to Raws and SmackDowns and hang out with Lawler and the gang. Um, you were on Monday Night Raw. They showed you in I the front on, row. I was on. Uh, uh, that was one of those things. I talked to Jerry a couple weeks before, and he's like, hey, we're doing the, the thing in, in um, um, Minneapolis, and I was going to be in Chicago the day before. He's like, oh, come on out. We'll get you on Raw. And I was like, okay, you know. And Steph and, and Steph and, yeah, of course, you know, go ahead, you know. So I went out there and they did it and they showed me and I had a blast. That is awesome. One of the great things that you preach and talk about is your relationship and friendship with Jackie Gleason, one of my favorites, and Richard Pryor. I saw one of the things you posted about Richard Pryor and, and such an honor for you at a young age to work with him. What can you tell us about the great, incredible Richard Pryor? Like nobody you'd probably ever meet your whole life. Just uh, thoughtful, kind, sweet. And even after we did the film, I mean, I was friends with him until he passed. Um, he knew I was an Eddie Murphy nut and took me on the set of Coming to America, you know, wow. when they were shooting that. Wow. And I got to meet John Amos, which was cool because, wow. of course, good times, One you know. The greatest movies, yeah. uh, n never stopped giving, ever. You know, just was just so kind to me. Uh, and his giving still continues because I meet people that didn't get to work with him and didn't get to meet him. And they want to talk about, what was Richard like? What was Richard like? Uh, Beyond words, man. I miss him. And actually, I mean, we're in the middle of, I haven't done it today, but um, I do 10 days of Richard Pryor from December 1st until December 10th. His birthday was the first, uh, his, his birthday was the first, um, and he passed on December 10th, which is the same day the toy opened in the theaters. Wow. So I do the 10 days of Richard Pryor every year, and I put up different photos and quotes and different things that he said. and. You know, he was just an awesome that human was being. Awesome. That's fantastic. But we want to know about Scott Shorts. That's why we're here. That's why everybody's here. We're talking about the 30th anniversary of A Christmas Story. All the cast members have come out here for Northeast Comic Con. You've been doing radio interviews, TV interviews. 32. I thought the sign said 30. Am I getting this wrong? Is it false? It's an old sign. Oh, it's an old sign. Okay, so we're talking about 32 years. He does his homework. I do my homework before I get here. It plays on WTBS for 24 hours straight. Mm -hmm. Is that too much or is that just enough? No, because people have different schedules and families have different schedules. And dude, it's, it's not like everybody watches it for all 24 hours. Jerry Lawler watches it all 24 hours. He puts it on on every television in his house, and he loves it, and it's great. Um, his family loves it, too, so it's always fun. But everybody is different. I might watch this part. They might watch that part. And if they miss something, they know in two hours they can watch it again. So it's all good. What do you think about gun control? Now, the, the, really go no, I'm not, no, I don't mean it in a, in a negative way, but you, you get the, back in the day, the Red Rider BB gun, now you can get it in Walmart. Not in you all can, states. No, no, you can get the, I saw it in, not yeah. in all states. Right, you know, right. California, not in Walmart. Right, right. Um, a, a, a BB gun is not the same as an AK-47, okay? Right, right. I mean, let's face it, you know. And they, they wrote the Second Amendment, you know, right to bear arms, when the thing shot one bullet, man. You know, there's a difference between, again, between a one-shot rifle and an AK-47, you know. I, I don't think people. I, just, I, don't, I don't. I don't think people need that kind of it weapon. Was, it was I more of a joke. That. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us, you're a collector now. Australia. What about Go your to Australia and see what their gun control is like? What are you doing now? Now you're a collectible, right? You have a bunch of. You had oh, stuff yeah. from all everything, right? That you've been doing, and then what's going on in Hollywood with you right now? What are you doing up there with everything? Uh, I do uh, a charity called A Minor Consideration. It's a full 501c3 right. charity. Right. As for child labor laws, you can go to aminorconsideration.org and check it out. And uh, we we love donations all the time. I and mean, we what we what we're there for is to help change the child labor laws. And we help former child stars, current child stars. Um, who have issues, problems, they need doctors, they need lawyers. We have people that work for us that help us out and help our members out. Uh, but the, the laws are the roughest thing because you got a lot of people that are taking advantage of kids. Uh, the reality shows, these kids are getting paid nothing. Right. You know, people don't understand, oh, you're on TV, you're making money. It's right. like, no, all those kids are getting paid zero. Right. You know, I'm not yeah. talking about the Kardashians, you right. know, I'm talking about the Dugars and John and Kate, let's say those kids that are 2 to 14, right. you know. Yeah. Now, you, you, you called me out on this interview and said I didn't do my research. What about the Coogan law, Jackie Coogan? And that was one of the reasons why the child labor laws, because Jackie Coogan, when he was a child with Charlie Chaplin, then he became Uncle Fester. Now, I did my homework. That goes a lot with what you're doing, the minor consideration. Is that true? Sure. I mean, uh, 
the, the Coogan law, which is really a federal law, is only enacted in about four to six states. Okay. That's it. Wow. Even though it's a federal law that wow. you're supposed to set up an account for a kid in show business, wow. they don't. They just don't care. Right. Louisiana, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, they're building all these studios because they don't care about the kids. And, and it's one of the reasons. If they can hire a kid, they, they don't have to work a minimum eight hours or maximum eight hours. They can work a 15 hours, pay them overtime like a 25 year old, right. you know. So we're trying to change that. We want to have the kids get treated better and at the end of the day have more money hopefully left over for them when they turn of age to pay for their college, to pay for a car, apartment, home, whatever. I think that's fantastic that you're giving back, Scott, and taking care of the young kids. You were a young kid growing up in Hollywood. Now you're taking care of the next generation, helping them out. It is such an honor to have you on, ladies and gentlemen, the legend, the icon, the one and only Scott Shorts. And Miss Elizabeth.